Good morning, I'm Fran Sutton-Smith and I'm going to be bringing you the reading this morning from Luke 11 verses 27 and 28 in the NIV. As Jesus was saying these things, a woman in the crowd called out, Blessed is the mother who gave you birth and nursed you. He replied, Blessed rather are those who hear the word of God and obey it. Let's pray for our lovely Trina as she brings us the message this morning. Father, thank you that you are a God who hears us when we call you. Help us today to hear what you have to say to us through Trina. Lord, please inspire her and fill her with the Holy Spirit. And as she brings your message, I pray that you'll bless her as much as she blesses us. In Jesus' name. Over to you, Trina. Good morning. Thank you, Fran, for the reading and for praying. I'm Trina Simpson, for those of you that don't know me, and I'm part of the Loughton Leadership. So I'm going to be talking to you this morning. It's so lovely to have this opportunity. It feels like such a long time. I'm actually standing in my conservatory at the moment with Robert Anderson in the garden and huge lights at my window. So my neighbours are going to be wondering what's going on. It's not too relaxing, but let's go and let's see what God's got to say to us this morning. We're carrying on with our prayer series and we've been looking at the Lord's Prayer. And as I've been preparing this and praying, I think it's just sank deeper and deeper into my heart that this is the, the very prayer that Jesus used to talk to his dad. It was his words. And he in turn taught it to his disciples and he's given it to us as well so that we can use it. And today we're going to be unpacking a bit the give us this day our daily bread. You know, if you cast your minds back to last week, I love Jodie's talk last week. It fired something up. But if you, you cast your mind back to that last week, Jody talked about being a kingdom people and bringing in God's kingdom. And in the same way, she mentioned how Jesus had gone round and he was healing people and casting out demons. And then when he'd done that, he drew the crowd together to teach them and to talk to them. And it's in that context that we see our verses for this morning, because the lady in the crowd who was listening, she calls out, Blessed is the woman who gave birth to you. And that was because she was touched and she'd been hearing what Jesus was saying. And yet Jesus, in his own way, he just turned that slightly and he, he put a different slant on it. And he said, blessed rather are those who hear the word of God and obey. It's a very small verse, but it says so much because it's Jesus pointing out the way that we need to live today. It's Jesus showing us what, what he expects of us. But also, he wasn't speaking from just a, a head knowledge he had. He was speaking from that real security of knowing who the father was, knowing his dad in heaven, knowing the embrace of his dad, and just knowing that that was the way we were meant to do life, that he was meant to do life, to listen, to talk to his dad. He was speaking out of that intimate relationship and trying to model that for us. So Jesus's relationship with the father, it was a base for all of his attitudes. It was a base for everything he did in the Bible. It was a base for the way that we see him live and the way that we saw him living out life and teaching others. And it was from that intimacy that his strength and power came. It's what he calls us to. In the Lord's Prayer last week, Jody said that the Lord's Prayer was a model for the way to live. And I loved that because we see Jesus is, is not just giving us a prayer, but he's saying, this is how you do it. This is life in the kingdom. Do it this way. And it's just such a wonderful thing. You know, when Jesus, when we hear that line, give us this day, our daily bread, there are two aspects to this that I want to unpack today. But give us this day our daily bread. The listeners of the day, they would have thought back to the Israelites in the desert and they would have thought of the manna that God provided supernaturally when they were wandering in the desert. That manna that dropped from heaven 
when they couldn't provide for, them, for themselves. And Jesus does that such a lot in the Bible. He alludes to the past, but with a truth that's still applicable in the present. And the truth of that is that today, God is still our provider. Our Father in heaven, Father God, is the one that provides for all of our needs if we let him, if we get hold of that. The goodness of God to his people, it's not changed today. It's the same as it was in Exodus 16. It's still there for us to draw on. And Ian, in the first week, he talked about the good, good father that we have. You know, we've got a father who just longs to draw us into relationship and to provide for us. And as we step out of our comfort zone, as we step out of it and into what Jesus is calling us to do and who Jesus is calling us to be, we, we actively join in that bringing in of his kingdom here on earth. We join in being a kingdom people. We become that kingdom people. And as we do that, it cultivates in us a real trust in God, a real trust in Father God that he will provide for everything that he asks us to do. I think when we start to live like that, we can really be thankful and we can see each day as the gift that it is and also the gift that each day brings. You know, I've got tons of stories about provision from God, especially on a physical need level, the things I needed to, to get by. You've heard a lot of them from Brazil, from, yeah, from being told what to do at the right time, from finding money supernaturally in a handbag that paid for a flight. But you know, that provision that was available for me in Brazil, it still carries on today because my circumstances have changed, but God hasn't. And I think one of the biggest things I've seen is the way God's provided a home for me. Some of you might know my story, but many of you won't. And I came back from Brazil and I didn't have a place to live. I didn't have anything. I had a few savings in the bank from when my dad had died, but I didn't have enough for a deposit, nowhere near enough. And so for two years, I was living with friends because I couldn't afford to pay a rent either. And then I heard of an organisation called Mission Housing, quick plug for Mission Housing here. They provide accommodation, help, help buy accommodation rather, for Christian workers. And I started talking to them. And talking to them, it seemed impossible because I didn't have finance. And yet there was something in my heart that I knew God was, was going to provide something. And so we carried on in dialogue. We carried on chatting. We carried on working things through. And as, as I was praying and thinking, this isn't going to go forward, somebody got in touch with me and said, I'll give you the money for a deposit. I was going to leave you something in my will, but I'm going to release that money to you for a deposit. I was absolutely amazed, but I still didn't really have enough. <laughs> then somebody else gave me some money towards a deposit which together with my, my meagre savings and what they'd given me, it was enough. So I went back to Mission Housing. I've got a deposit. It wasn't, I still wasn't there. I didn't earn enough to get a mortgage. So I couldn't get a mortgage. I could, didn't have a credit history in the UK because I'd lived overseas. So everything was very, very complicated. And one of the things that Mission Housing does is they ask you to fundraise via your friends to invest in the house that you're going to buy. So with Ian King's encouragement and help, I don't think I'd have got through this phase without Ian, I started to do that. I sent out letters, not asking for it, but just saying what my need was and that this was how they could help. And before long, I had friends offering to invest for 10 years. So I have my home now for 10 years, only for 10 years on paper. But you know, who knows what God's gonna do? because I've already seen God provide from nothing. And one of the things in Brazil, I was worried about where I would live because London area is so expensive, property is so small. And I desperately wanted a place that I'd be able to use for others, to open up, to have people stay if they needed to. And a very wise friend of mine in Brazil said, Trina, don't ask God for what you think you can afford. She said, ask God for what you want. And so I did. I asked God for a three bedroomed house with a garden, with a side passage that I could use to have people round, where I could entertain people, that I could open up. And that's what I've got. That's what God did. 
part of the faith journey with me, with Tracy and David Ross. Some of you will know them. They actually rang me up and said, we feel that God wants you to buy our house. And I laughed. I said, I can't afford your house. But you know, God provided a way. And it was so easy working with Tracy and David to sort things out. It was amazing. And yet it didn't stop there either. I'd been away for 16 years, had no furniture. I didn't have pots and pans. I had, didn't have anything in England anymore. When I left Brazil, I'd given everything away except my books, which I'd tried to stuff in cases to bring home. And you know, when I got back to the UK, when my house started to come through, Lenny's and Lawrence were leaving. And they said to me, Trina, we've got furniture. If you want any of our furniture, come and see. They furnished my house together with a few other people that had things to give away. The provision of God through other people, through our family, through each other. And it was just incredible. The biggest gift I could ever have. I think the, the most wonderful thing for me has been every time I walk into my house, I, I think of God's goodness. And I think of how much he loves me to provide for me. And I also think of the goodness and grace and generosity of others that helped me on the journey. We're in this together. And that's the exciting bit. There's so many stories I could tell about how God's provided. Broken laptops, asking friends for an old one, and they've chosen to buy me a new one. I think this time of shielding in particular has been one when I've seen God's provision in huge ways. I don't think I'd be sane now if it wasn't for the way people had provided for me and the way God had provided the family of God to support me. Because shielding is really tough. And when you live on your own, it's a whole different dynamic. And I try not to live in that, but it's hard. And what I've seen through shielding is the, the phone calls from people, the doorstep visits, the flowers that arrive just when you're feeling low. I think to see how God has spoken to others and helped me be blessed in the process is just so humbling. It's amazing. There was one day recently, because I can't shop, and I'd, I had a shopping delivery that had been changed so it wasn't arriving when I wanted it to. And I, there was going to be a few hours where I genuinely had very little in the house. And I just thought, oh, that's fine. I can wait till 10 o'clock tonight. I didn't want to inconvenience people asking them to go shopping for me because people are so good. And um, Simon, one of our interns, turned up unexpectedly on my doorstep. And he brought me Korean noodles. They were amazing, by the way, Simon. Thank you. But he brought me Korean noodles. And he said, oh, I made these yesterday. And I was going to bring them to you yesterday. But I couldn't. So I brought them today. And I was just like, well, that's provision because that's my lunch, you know. And even the little things, I think God is so interested in. One of the bigger things during shielding is I've got a dog. And the story of my dog, I love dogs, for those of you that know me. I had one in Brazil and I really wanted one in the UK, especially once lockdown started last year. I thought this is a time to get my dog, like many other people, because when I looked, the prices were just extortionate and I couldn't get one. And about, it was in January, start of January, second week in January, I was out walking in Fairlock Waters and I got a phone call. Trina, do you still want a dog? And I said, well, yeah, but I've given up on it for now. I'm going to look once lockdown ends. Yeah, but Trina, if you want a dog, <laughs> we've got one for you. I said, sorry. <laughs> and it was Ian who rang me and he said, um, we've got a dog for you, but you need to give an answer today because the breed has had a cancellation and we need to tell her. He said, a group of friends have clubbed together to buy you a dog. And you know, I've got the most wonderful little dog at the moment. She's called Misty. And some of you have seen her in meetings because when I talk on Zoom, she likes to sit on my knee. But um, she's just so lovely. And not only have I now got an extra bit of life in the house and I've got something to hold and to touch, which I haven't had since March last year. I've got something that really blesses me and really blesses my mental health. But I think what really touched me was that people cared enough to do something like that. And again, the, the love of others just slips something 
into my heart that brought healing to something I didn't know was unhealed. God's provision for us. That's how he works. He wants us to, to live dependent on him. And we're in it together. We're on the journey together. That life the Jesus way I think is simple and fun. And I think we miss that sometimes. But you know, receiving our daily bread, it's more than just our physical needs. It's also about hearing the Father and obeying what our Father said to ask us to do. You know, in Matthew 4, verse 4, it says, Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. And we need to be a people that look to God, that, that dig into that relationship with Dad so that we, we, we are able to express our hearts to him, but we're also able to sit on his lap and to sit with him and to listen and to hear what he says and to hear him give us our bread for today, to, to tell us what he wants us to do today, to tell us who to call, to tell us where to go, to tell us what not to say, to give us revelation. It's, it's that, that guide for each day. The Bible says, my sheep listen to my voice. They know me. You know, we, we, we want to be a people that cultivate that expectation in our hearts and that we live in that, that, that heart attitude of, of asking and listening and then obeying and obeying even when it's hard. Do you know what? We find it much easier to obey when we're obeying someone that we really love. It's much easier than obeying someone because we feel we have to. And if we've got that love relationship with Father, obedience is a whole lot easier. Doesn't mean it's always easy, but it's easier. You know, and every time that we recognise God, our Father, speaking to us and prompting us, every time that we step out and that we do that, every time that we hear and that we obey, we're, we're turning into who we are called to be. We're becoming more of ourselves, the, the person that God called us to be, the, the person that Jesus has made us to be. And we're becoming more and more like Jesus. A very quick story I want to tell here, just back a few weeks ago, some of you know I'm running a, a training course, a six month pilot course for some churches and young people in London, our interns have been part of it. And um, about two days before the course, I felt like God said to me, invite such a body. And this is a young lady from another church that I didn't know she'd want to come, but I invited her. And you know, she came, and after I got the most lovely message from her saying that it had re-sparked something in her life and something that she'd lost had come alive again. It had changed something for her. You know, when we step out and we do those little things, those little things that we hear from God and that we obey, they become really big things in someone's life. And that's amazing. It's incredible. You know, some of you might want to write down in the chat at the moment, times when you've heard God and you've obeyed and it's been a little thing but something big has happened from it. There might be other times when we've heard God like me and we haven't obeyed and you might be thinking, oh, the what ifs. I've had lots of those as well. But you know what? We're on a journey and we're learning and we're doing it together and every day we're becoming more and more like Jesus and every day we're becoming more and more who he wants us to be, that kingdom people, part of his kingdom, bringing his kingdom in. That's our destiny. You know, in Matthew 10, Jesus sent out the 72. And if you look at those verses, they say, don't take anything with you. I think they're saying, don't carry extra weight. Don't carry things that might stop you going quickly. Don't carry things that might hold you back. Don't be weighed down by details and worries. I think they're saying, trust me, let me do it, let me show you where to go, let me show you how to do it, let me lead you. You know, I really believe that on the same level God says that to us, that our Father says it to us, give us this day our daily bread, let me lead you. Provision and revelation go in hand in hand. I'm going to bring this into land soon, but if you Think about Romans 8, 19. It says that the whole of creation 
is waiting for the revelation of the sons of God. It's waiting for us to be who we're called to be and to do what we're called to do. The whole of creation. <laughs> it's, it's mind blowing, isn't it? But that's what that's what's going on. We're in a story that's much bigger than our story. And we're all meant to be to be living life on mission. That's what we're called to do. We're called to more than this. We're called to more than what goes on in our home and our work and those things. We, we're called to more than that. Yes, we're called to our families. Yes, we're called to our neighbours. Yes, we're called to our workplaces. But we're, we're called to our families. We're called to friends. We're called to communities. And we're called to, to bring Jesus to those that don't know him. We're called to get hold of Jesus' lost sons and daughters and to be a people that receiving revelation from God, walk with them until they get to know Jesus too. You know, I think sometimes we need to reframe how we see God. We, we all tend to put God in our, our box of understanding and our box of understanding because we can't truly understand the enormity of who God is. Our box of understanding just makes him that bit smaller, not deliberately, but we, it's just the way we handle it. And actually, I think there are moments, and I think this season is one of them, where God is saying to us, put different lenses on. Put Jesus' lenses on. See how big I really am. See who I am. You know, we're called to live supernaturally. We're called to live dependent on our dad. That's how we're called to live. And if we can get a glimpse of the the hugeness of God, the, the all-powerfulness of our dad, the, the love that he's got for us and the love that he's got to others. If we can get hold of that, we can, we can start to understand that all the resources of heaven and earth are available for us because he's got what it needs to accomplish the vision he gives us. And we don't need to worry. Yeah, we might have days when our faith is stretched to the absolute limit, but we don't need to worry because if he's said it to us, he'll do it. He'll provide our daily bread, the things we need to do what he wants us to do. And he'll also speak to us and give us the guidance and the instructions that we need, the revelation that we need to do that. And this is exciting. Living like that, <clears throat> I think it helps us. Excuse me, sorry. <clears throat> Living like that, I think it helps us to, to really cultivate that mindset of a disciple of Jesus because we're called to live supernaturally. We're called to see healings and miracles. I haven't seen a miracle for a long time. I have seen them, but I haven't seen them for one for a long time. I want to see it. I want to see more of that. I want to see my daily bread, our daily bread happening right in front of us. That's what I want to see. I long for that. You know, perhaps some of us, as I'm speaking, we, we might need to think about our self-sufficiency. Are we brave enough? Am I brave enough to put down my self-sufficiency? Am I brave enough to lay down my desire to control? Am I brave enough to not rely on my own giftings and capabilities, but brave enough instead to say to God, this is about you. You've said it. You'll do it. it. It takes a lot. It sounds simple, but it takes a lot. Are we brave enough to trust God to provide instead of letting our bank balances provide? Maybe some of us need to take a bit of time and talk to God about openings that we've not let him into. Little things where he's called us to do something and where We've not been able to open up that, that thing in our heart to make us more dependent, to allow us to be more dependent on him. You know, there's something about really trusting in God. And as I say this, I'm not there. I'm there sometimes, but not all the time. But there's something that when we really trust in God, it goes beyond the head knowledge and what we read in the Bible. And it goes beyond even what we we feel in our hearts sometimes that that deep-seated trust in God 
it's, it's down in our gut somewhere. And it sits somewhere right down here. And it's yes, when everything else is going wrong around me, when everything else isn't working, I can trust and depend on that, on my dad. I can trust in him. And that's something that I really want to cultivate more of. Because I think, I really think that's, that's the glimpse of, of what I get that we're called to live. That provision and the trust in dad, in our father, to provide. The trust in him to speak when we need it. We're, we're on an ongoing journey, but we're called to something more than this. <laughs> it sounds a bit funny saying that, doesn't it? But it's true. We're called to more than this. And I think this is a season for us to get hold of it, to get hold of being dependent on our Father in a way that's different. I'm going to stop there because I'm handing over to Ian to do communion. And I want to leave Ian free to lead that as God, as God prompts him. But thank you for letting me speak today and thank you for listening. It's been lovely being with you.